I'm Lisa Havenka. I'm 43 <laughs> and I work in finance. I have two daughters, age 21 and 17. Yeah, and I'm married. I first, I felt a lump in my breast towards the end of the year, um, 2012. And I went to, to see the doctor, I got an appointment for a mammogram, and then they wanted to do a biopsy the next day. Um, my first biopsy actually came back negative, and they said to me, everything is fine. And when I saw my report at the doctor's room, I said to them, my uh, um, lump is not in the same place as you, you've got on the report. Should I be concerned about it? So I went back to the radiologist that did the mammogram, and they said, no, no, we need to redo, redo it. So I went back, had another biopsy, and yeah, that one came back positive for breast cancer. I kind of realized that it was going to be breast cancer just by their reaction, you know. Um, and all I was thinking to myself is I want to remain positive. I don't want to accept any negative um, report. I don't want to accept a death sentence. So when I was told, I sort of approached it very factually, you know, like this is it and this is what we have to do and, and that's how I dealt with it. They referred me immediately to a, a, a surgeon, a general surgeon. I went the very next day to consult with the surgeon. And he was happy to just cut out a, like a wedge kind of thing. And he booked it for the following week. He said, no, we're rushing it. We have to do it. This is it. And then I spoke to friends and family, and they were very concerned about the approach. You know, because you hear so many repeat cases of breast cancer. So my sister basically convinced me to go to Carol Ben, and Carol is fantastic. I mean, she fitted me in like the next day. So I saw her and she said, we don't need to rush it. It doesn't grow overnight, so it's not going to make any difference. And her approach was very good. Um, it really put me at ease. Um, the way that she deals with people, and she's a specialist in this field, so she approached from a totally different perspective. Book you in and check if it's spread to the lymph nodes. Do an MRI of the breast to see what we're dealing with. And based on those um, results, we actually determined that I needed a mastectomy and not just having the lump removed. So I think the advice I would give anybody is, firstly, get a second opinion. And secondly, consult somebody in the, that's a specialist in the field that you have an issue. Because you just end up going a longer path and having heartache. I really, I really do think that that, that was my saving grace. Because, I mean, if I'd had just the lump removed, there was no consultation about um, reconstruction, plastic surgery, anyway, and the, and the lump was literally here, so it would have been totally visible. Um, I then went with Carol Ben, I had the mastectomy with immediate reconstruction. I mean, I consulted the plastic surgeon before I even had anything done, you know, so it was a totally different process. I went for four of the red chemo sessions and then I had, um, that was one every three weeks and then I went on to Taxol, um, 12 sessions, that's one every week. So that was a total of six months and I'm still on Herceptin which is the target treatment, that's a year, so it's one treatment every three weeks. Chemo, <laughs> when you're going through it it's really nasty. Um, but I think if you're positive, they give lots of advice at the oncology department on diet and what you should and shouldn't do. Um, they, they try and treat you as naturally as possible. I mean, they're pumping a lot of chemicals into you, but they, they don't give you a lot of medication or anything. You know, it's natural things for mouth sores like the bicarb and salt water. Um, they also tell you that you should drink at least two liters of water a day to flush it out of your kidneys and that definitely does help because I found the times when I battled to drink water I was a lot more sick. Um, nowadays the, the nausea and that is pretty much well managed with drugs. It's just that it, it saps your energy, makes you tired, um, you don't have energy for, for, for very much and um, you're flat for a few days after every session of, of the red one. I mean, that one was the nasty one. Um, the other, and obviously you lose your hair very quickly. It's a bit of a shock when you hear that after your first treatment, you'll lose it within 10 to 14 days. So that goes very quickly. 
um, on the tack sole, um, I wasn't as tired. I had a little bit more energy. It gives a little bit of joint pain. And, but with that, then I lost all my eyebrows and my eyelashes. It makes your eyes very dry, you know, your mouth dry, those kind of things. But other than that, no nausea or any nasty side effects. And the Herceptin, the, the target treatment, has basically nothing. I mean, that's just more of an inconvenience to go and have treatment. <laughs> We're not feeling fine. I am on a good medical aid, but even with that, you have to pay in to the doctors. I mean, the, the specialists are not, not contracted in. So I ended up paying about 20% of the bills, the surgeon's bills, myself, even with a good medical aid. I think on my plastic surgery, I paid about 8,000, and on my other bill, probably about six. I've just had another operation, like the second stage of my reconstruction, I've had to pay in another 7,000. Um, Platinum Life I found were always very friendly from the beginning. I was referred by a friend and um, my dealings with them were very easy. Um, I've had my policy for a number of years, I actually don't remember how long. But when I claimed, I suddenly remembered, oh, but I've got a policy that might cover this. And um, the forms were sent to me quickly. The biggest delay was probably getting the doctor to complete the forms because they run all their tests and they do all their consultations and that took about two months just to get the forms completed. But once I had submitted my claim, it was very quick. I think they paid out within about a, a week and a half of me submitting the claim. No questions asked, no problems, no hassles. Um, they confirmed that the claim had been accepted and it was processed and when they would be paying out. And even afterwards, I was contacted by um, staff. I mean, it was a very personal experience, I think. You know, you're not just a number. Um, I found they ask about your treatment and what you're going through and how you're dealing with it and where you are in your treatment plan. And I mean, they've sent little gifts and it's really just a, a very personal experience. Medical bills and also how to like, clear debts, you know, credit cards and whatnot. Little things that you always want to. And you can spoil yourself as well. <laughs> With cancer nowadays, I don't think they really know why some people get cancer. I mean, there's something that they can trace back to why you got cancer. And uh, they were telling me that 70% of breast cancers are unrelated to family history. I don't have a family history of breast cancer. Um, and even at my age, it's not really... But what I've realized is that cancer is no restrictor of respect of persons, regardless of age. I've seen very young people undergoing chemotherapy. So um, I would recommend that anybody has their annual checkups, you know, the things that we should be checking, your mammogram, or um, pap smears and whatnot. Because if it is picked up early, you have a much better um, chance of, so, of living a longer life. I mean, mine was picked up early, and you, you, you don't want to get it diagnosed once it's spread. It's just more difficult to treat, I think.